here. Boop. Look at that. That's what we're going to talk about today. Smartphones, all smartphones, by the way, not mm -hmm. just not just Apple. We're going to include Android, which I love. So again, here you are, Jay Good Village. We say it every week, a free community where we teach anyone the basics of how to travel anywhere in the world for free. Today, we have our expert Julie's with us. So we're going to dive in and get started. Yeah, so we are going to be talking about smartphone photography. Um, and like Mia said, we are going to be giving you tips that you can use on any phone. It's not just going to be iPhone, not just going to be Android. Um, there are a couple little examples because I'm an iPhone user um, that might be iPhone specific, but predominantly this is for any phone um, that you could possibly have or use. So it'll work for everybody. Uh, I am Julie Tiefteller. I am the director of IT and marketing for JGoot. I, I do a lot of behind the scenes work, but I, I love to come up here and talk to Mia sometimes. Uh, you might see me on social media too, which we'll be talking about later, but that's, that's who I am. I am also a wife of a military member. My husband's still currently active duty. We're a military family. I used to be on active duty myself. Um, he's actually deployed downrange for a year, so it's me on the home front with two kiddos right now. Um, those are our two boys. It's Jasper and Quint. They're 11 and 9, so they've been doing a lot of travels with me. I like to say that I'm one of the least flexible Jay Gooters in the sense that I have to work around a military work schedule as well as a kiddo school schedule, and that this lifestyle has still not just worked for me, but completely changed our lives. We joined the Jay Goot Lounge last February. And since then, we've booked over $53,000 worth of free travel. We are ecstatic about that. It's, it's been life-changing. Um, so with that, we've done business class flights. We've been to, I think, up to like 11 countries this year. Um, and we've done... Oh my gosh, uh, this year? Yeah. <laughs> yes, this <Incredible>. year. <laughs> um, and uh, some of that's with cruising. Uh, we were able to do a free cruise because of Jegu. And um, and yeah, this has absolutely been a life-changing thing for us. So excited to uh, dive in today to tell you all about phone tips. So let's get into that. The very first tip that I have for you guys is it seems pretty basic, but it can ruin a lot of pictures right from the get-go, is just to clean your camera lens. Um, unfortunately, that's not like everyone's like go-to thought when they're getting ready to take a picture and you can completely wreck what could be a gorgeous photo of you in front of, you know, the opera house at Sydney or something like that. You could be doing something amazing and you're not going to be able to have this like beautiful picture because you didn't just take a second to like wipe off that screen. Obviously, if you have like a nice microfiber cloth or something, that would be better um, to clean that camera. But if you don't, even just like a quick swipe on your shirt can make a big difference. Uh, here's a before and after of my friend's little Frenchie. You have a Frenchie, don't you? Yeah. Yes. I did rest in power, Gidget. But however, when I saw this slide, I was like, whose Frenchie is that? I have yes. many, many blurry pictures before I clean my camera. I have yes. to say that's one of the biggest things in my phone. I'll say like, you need to clean your lens. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. Uh, um, so that would be tip one, just so that you make sure you're not ruining a good shot there. Uh, the next thing that we're going to talk about is the rule of thirds. This can really make or break a beautiful shot. Um, something that's a tip for using your smartphone with the rule of thirds is to turn on your grid line. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Uh, the rule of thirds is a key composition guideline. Like this is how we lay out our photo. So if you think of kind of like a tic-tac-toe board, two horizontal lines, two vertical lines, um, that's what we're talking about in terms of grid lines. And that allows you to line up the composition of your shot. Um, ideally, we want to see the like focal point of your shot is going to fall at one of those intersections. So I'll show you how to do that in a minute. But this is how you would turn it on on your camera. Um, this is obviously an iPhone, but it's going to work the same on Android. You're going to go to your camera settings and you're just going to turn on grid. So you're going to go to settings on your phone. Then you're going to go to camera and then you're going to make sure that you turn on grid. That's going to allow you to see those vertical and horizontal lines like I was talking about and then you'll be able to use the rule of thirds. So in order to do that, you wanna place the focal point or your subject a little bit off center for balance in the photo. This is really just to add interest um, and energy to the composition of your photograph. It takes us from simply taking photos to actually creating photographs, which is more of like the artistic point of photos. Um, 
this is not a strict rule. I mean, you can always break rules. Rules are made to be broken, but it aids in creating like really dynamic photos that have more energy. So I'm going to give you some examples of that. Um, this picture, we're just looking at a pier here, but you can see here, we're lining up the pier itself with the horizontal line and the photo on the left. And then with the, the top line, the top horizontal line and the photo on the right. Now, if you look at the image, we're taking pictures of the same exact thing here, but it's a completely different shot depending on where we're lining up that pier. And that helps us to kind of tell the story to the viewer of what's actually going on in this photo. So for instance, if I wanna focus on the sky and how expansive the sky is and how beautiful those clouds are, then I would wanna line it up in the photo on the left where I'm, I'm using the rule of thirds to show two thirds of the photograph is now sky. Versus if I wanna show you the deep rolling waves and how beautiful those are coming into the beach, then I'm gonna use that two thirds of the photograph is now C. So, but I'm lining up the focal point, the pier on either the top or the bottom horizontal line, not directly in the middle of the photograph. You could put it in the middle of the photograph. It's just less visually interesting. Okay. So, um, love that. What a difference between just including those clouds and then the pier as well. That's so, it's so much fun because you can want either one of those, right? Just depends on what kind of effect you want. Exactly. These would both be good examples of using the rule of thirds. Okay. So if I put the pier directly in the middle, that would not be a good example. Mm -hmm. um, but these are great examples of actually using the rule of thirds to, still, to tell a story with that photograph. But depending on where you're lining up that focal point at, one, at each one of these intersections, that photo can tell a completely different story. So with landscapes, and if you're looking at scenery, we want to line up the horizon with either that top or that bottom vertical line, like we just did in the pier photo. So if you see here, we're looking at the horizon where the sky meets ground. We want that to line up either on that top horizontal line or the bottom horizontal line. Um, and that allows for like a more artistic looking, looking photograph. Whereas if we're talking about with people or with pets, with animals, um, then we're looking more towards the eyes and where the eyes line up. So if you're lining up your eyes with that top horizontal line or the bottom horizontal line, that's still a good example of using the rule of thirds. So it does look, for instance, here, like the subject is directly in the middle of the photograph, but it's a great portrait because of where the eyes are hitting that top horizontal line. Does that make sense? Yeah. Good. I'm glad you're loving it. That's great. Yes. yes. And Chris said he loves this perspective too. So thank you. Nice. So this is an example, like personal example with me. I did try to throw in some personal examples today. Any photos that you see of me are um, from my iPhone so that you can get uh, examples of iPhone photography. So here, same subject myself and same um, same location. And I was just playing around with a friend, but you can see in this left shot, she had lined me up like directly in the middle. I'm facing the camera. It's a little bit, you know, less visually interesting. Doesn't look quite like a portrait. It doesn't look quite as artistic. So I asked her to lean it a little bit to the, her left. Um, that way it was bringing in more of the scenery, more of the flowers, telling more of the story of where I was and what I was doing. Um, and you can see like now this is a rule of thirds photo and I'm going to show you how in the next screen, but this right one just seems like more artistic. They're both good photos. They're both fine, but the right one I strongly prefer. <laughs> um, so if you go in this next shot, you can see I've laid the grid over it. So you can see exactly what I'm talking about. My body is lined up on that, that right vertical line. That's how we're splitting the photo into thirds. And then my, um, my face is on one of those intersection points. So it's directly like on that top right intersection. Um, so this is allowing us to use the rule of thirds in terms of a portrait. Also, just quick side note, if any of you ever come to Tampa, this is in Hyde Park in Tampa. Um, it's called Posey's Flower Truck. Posey's a very, very sweet lady. She will absolutely let, let you walk up and take photos just like this with her flower truck. She loves it when people do that. You don't even have to buy anything. Um, she does love it when you tag her on social media, which we'll talk more about later. But uh, that's a really great photo op if you ever happen to be in my town. So Noted. Um, Shannon, I love it. Yeah, so you didn't move. You had the photographer move. Brilliant. 
Yeah. So I just, I, I like to occasionally jump over, um, especially if we're doing stuff like that just for fun. And, you know, you can peek in your image reel and kind of see how things are going. And, um, and yeah, that, that helped to shift the perspective and it made a completely different shot, which I liked. Now, if you're a parent, you probably are already familiar with this next one. Um, but I like to throw it out there for anyone else, especially with travels as well. Uh, that you want to shoot that same subject a few different times, not just take a shot and walk away because you could be missing your best shot. If I did that with my kids, I would never get a good shot. Um, this right example is a Christmas card I made a few years ago of my kids just like jumping on my bed uh, with Santa hats on. I took probably 60 photos and this was the one that um, that really made me smile, like got great faces for both of them. It was a really cute shot. Um, the left example is from a trip I took last year, Jagu Life. Um, I got uh, some really great Rule One tickets, so I got a really great cash deal um, to get us up to Vancouver. And I uh, did an Alaskan cruise with my dad, so this is actually from Alaska. Um, but I got I booked those flights using what I had learned in the book. And anyway, this was from a, a tour where we were going by really quickly in this like little train tram type of thing through the mountains. And this is um, this is actually rainforest. And as we were going by, the trees were just flying by. But I was just like snapping really quickly, like really quick shots over and over again, because I could come back and see um, this beautiful thing. And I see Lynn asking, is that using the burst feature? I'm so glad you asked that because that's my very next slide. <laughs> so um, that was a really great segue. So burst mode, um, if you have an iPhone, this one is going to be iPhone specific, so it might be a little bit different for Android. You can Google it if it's different. Um, but for burst phone, on, burst mode on iPhone, it used to be that you would hold down the shutter. So like when you go to take a picture, you would hold down that little circle in the middle and that would create burst mode. Um, they have updated that. If you hold it down now, it's going to go into video mode automatically and it will record a video. So that's not burst mode anymore. If you want to do burst mode, you need to do what I'm showing you here in this photo. You would drag that circle to the left. So like towards your image reel. And if you if you push and hold it and move it to the left, then it's going um, to go into burst mode. And if you see the number on the right side, that like right phone showing you the picture in the middle that says 19. Um, that's how many photos are stacking up as you're holding that. So that's how you do burst mode now. Burst mode, if I didn't cover it already, that's just how you take a whole bunch of pictures really quickly. Um, so your shutter is just going to be going off like crazy and you'll rack up 20 photos, 30 photos in a couple of seconds. Um, so that's how you do burst mode. And that will allow you to get pictures like this in still form. Um, without having to do a video. You could also do a video. Um, that's a hack that I know some people like to do is you just take a video with your phone and then you can screenshot the picture that you want. Uh, the issue there is that it, it sometimes is going to get really blurry in video form because video is not designed to be still shot. So, um, so I think it's I think it's a better technique if you're wanting a still image to do burst mode. Beverly says on Android, you can swipe down and hold for burst mode. Thank you, Beverly. I appreciate you. That's awesome. All right. So tip number four, I would recommend to move in close. I think um, a lot of times we get stuck into only doing one perspective. We are going to talk a little bit about perspective shifting here. I love texture. I love close up. I love details. I like, um, I like to really help the viewer to be able to experience what I'm seeing. And a lot of times when we're doing that from a zoomed out perspective, we're not actually um, getting to experience these fine details that you can see up close in person. It's also gonna add a lot of dimension to your storytelling if you are making a photo book, for instance. Um, if everything's just like big zoomed out landscape photos or big zoomed out family pictures or something like that, you're not getting the detail of these flowers or the butterflies or, or the, the little nuances that make that trip so special. Um, also, like if you're in a family environment and you're doing big family photos, even things like somebody holding hands or, or somebody, um, a lot of times my husband will kind of ruffle my son's hair and I try to capture little images of that close up. Mm -hmm. um, those are the moments that I want to remember later. And it helps me to tell that story through pictures when I make 
a photo book later. Um, if you're doing that in video, same thing. Like we would take, I would take little close up video and I would pair it with zoomed out video so that you're really getting the full scope of what I'm experiencing um, behind the camera as the viewer. Those are gorgeous photos. Yeah, all on iPhone. <laughs> um, so it's pretty, um, or smartphone. I don't want to be iPhone specific. It's actually pretty, uh, I wouldn't even debate it. Android has probably a better camera nowadays than iPhone does. Um, iPhone has a lot of features that I like, but there's a lot of iPhone users. So there's that too. But Yeah, and smartphone is just the best best way to say it. A couple comments too. Christopher, agree, changing your angles close is key. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. A lot of comments about burst mode. So thank you for that. When, when you're supposed to be doing work, but really checking about what the heck burst mode is. Thank you, Shannon. Don't tell your boss. You might be on here and checking on burst mode too. Uh, thanks for letting us know about the new use. That's wonderful. Love burst mode uh, and wondered what happened to it. One other. This one's really great. My toddler constantly records videos holding it down while my 10 year old used to create a billion burst photos. Not sure which they prefer. Thank you for that, Ashley. That's so cute. <laughs> That's awesome. It. Um, okay, so continuing on talking about perspective, we were talking about getting up close. Uh, you can also just change the perspective of like where you're where you're standing, what angle you're holding uh, the camera at um, or the smartphone at to get a completely different perspective of your shot. Uh, we just went to Paris in February um, and we booked. So I have a family of four, like I was showing you earlier. We booked business class tickets for my whole family to Paris and back um, based off of what we learned in the lounge. And we have another Europe trip coming up in a couple months and we're doing all uh, all business class tickets for that too. So when I tell you Jegu changed my life, like it literally changed my life. Um, this trip, we ended up seeing five different countries. So the first one we started in was France and we did see uh, the Eiffel Tower in Paris. This is like a little plaza that's kind of like across from the Eiffel Tower. You can get some really great shots there, especially in the morning. It's not very crowded. The lighting is gorgeous. Um, and my kid was not as impressed with the Eiffel Tower as I thought he would be. Um, but he told me he wanted to eat it. And I was like, okay, well, mommy will make that happen for you. And so, um, so we just played around with angles until it looked like he was able to eat the Eiffel Tower. Then the Eiffel Tower became really cool and he told all his friends about it. So... Um, so there's a secret hack <laughs> bringing more. <laughs> there it is. The Chocadero. I'm going to say that wrong. Sorry if I'm butchering it. But no, I, I think, I think that was a great, uh, pro tip on where to go as well too. And that is a new take because usually people are doing, you know, this kind of thing. When they yeah, exactly. <laughs> that that area I thought was the best for pictures. Like it was just, it was really, really nice. And that um, looks like sun. Is that sunrise then? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got out there. It wasn't even that early when we went, I want to say maybe 830 or something. Obviously, it'll depend on the time of year, but I was surprised that it was so, so pretty at that moment. Um, and we ended up doing some professional shots, but I, I really loved these iPhone shots. They just had a lot more of our family's like energy in it. Mm -hmm. So this is, uh, again, in that same plaza on the right, that's me and my husband. Um, again, just another cute shot. I wanted to show with the Eiffel Tower, we do this with a lot of things where it's like above your head is we'll, we'll, um, we'll selfie from uh, beneath us or we'll lay the phone on the ground. You can lay the phone on the ground or just at different angles just to get like a more unique shot. Um, thank you, Sandy. Mm -hmm. And then uh, my son Jasper here on the left wanted to hug the Washington Monument. We were just in DC like we were talking about. Uh, for the Jay Goot Lounge meetup, and um, and he wanted to hug the Washington Monument. So I, I was actually with Shannon for that shot. And uh, we just like moved a sidewalk over so that we could get the perspective that we needed so that the boys could kind of do their little fun shots. Um, and it doesn't have to be fun and silly. I love fun and silly. That's what our family does. But even just like changing the angle gives you, you know, a little bit more visual interest for your photos. Um, it's going to make them more artistic. It's going to make them more frameable, more fun to share. Uh, and it's going to add to that storytelling dynamic, like I said, when you're building your home movies or your photo albums. It does add a, a really great personal element to it. Yeah. So tip six here is to seek natural lighting. So we want to use the sun as much as possible, obviously, like... Um, I think we've all seen like the difference between a uh, natural lighting, like what's on our faces right now versus um, like really harsh, just indoor yellow yucky lighting. 
um, that's not going to be nearly as flattering. So we want to use um, natural lighting to the best of our abilities, but the midday sun can be very, very harsh and create very harsh shadows. It's also blinding to look at. Uh, ask my boys <laughs> how many times I'm like, smile, and they're like squinting because they can't see a thing. Um, so we want to opt for morning or evening light. Uh, golden hour, most people have probably heard of that before, but just to make sure, golden hour is the hour after sunrise and the hour before sunset. And that's a really great time to take photos. It will offer this like nice golden cast to your pictures. If you don't want that, um, then go a little bit earlier uh, in the evening or a little bit later in the morning so that it's so that you don't have that golden light because that's going to kind of go into all your pictures. I think it's yummy and delicious and beautiful. And like, I want all the golden hour pictures, but if you don't like it, um, just go a little bit away from that, not at midday. And um, other tips with natural lighting, shadows can be very, very visually dynamic in your pictures. So they're not necessarily a bad thing. Um, when it's a bad thing is when it's kind of, especially on faces, we don't want it to disrupt like being able to see the subject that you're trying to photograph. So be conscious of that. If you're taking, you know, a family photo underneath a tree uh, with leaves and stuff, it's going to end up creating like these weird shadows that you're seeing on the right versus um, being in the shade of a structure, something that's more solid is going to give you uh, good natural light and being able to diffuse the light so that it's not uh, so harsh. So we want the look on the left, not the look on the right is what we're going for. Um, but where shadows can be helpful is something like this, where we're using shadows to add depth, to add interest, to add character to the photograph. So my main rule with shadows is that I, I don't want it to affect uh, faces. Beyond that, um, if it's adding visual interest to the photograph, then it can be really artsy. That's going to come down to personal preference. Um, a couple other tips with natural lighting. Position your subject to face the light source for more flattering photographs. If I was to turn away from this window right now and I put, you know, if I took my laptop and I put it behind me, um, it's going to be a much less flattering view of me. Um, it's going to, the backlight behind me would make my face look really, really dark. So I'm always, if I'm in a live stream, I'm over here facing my window so that I get beautiful natural light on my face. I want to do the same thing for my photographs and my videos. Um, if you are on the other hand, taking the photo and you're not in it yourself, then you want the light source to be behind you so that the light source is facing your subjects. Uh, my only caveat to that would be if it is midday and it is harsh light, then I am going to look for some type of structure to break up the light so that my kids aren't facing sunshine. <laughs> so I look for like a building um, or something that has like a solid shadow and I put them over there so I can take a beautiful photo. I'm going to pop this comment in here real quick. Simone had mentioned to deal with squinting, try having people close their eyes, tell them to open them and then take that pack, that picture really fast. Cause that's all you get. Yep. <laughs> yeah. You get a one, two, three. I've, yep. I've done that a few yep. times. Very Sometimes true. it's unavoidable, but it is. we like shaded structures for that. Oh, so fun. we're going to get into, yeah. So now we're going to get into some of our creative modes. Um, this is panorama. Uh, the iPhone has like, you can just swipe over to this. I think most smartphones have this where you can just go into panorama mm -hmm. directly from your um, from where your camera is. And so this, this is going to allow you to take a big wide shot of whatever it is that you're viewing. Um, that's not always very easily printable, but it does translate well into photo albums. Like if you do a, if you're doing a, um, <laughs> see Mia doing one up there. <laughs> you, can't, you can't not get me to do these. <laughs> yeah. I love them. So Thank I've got you. a few personal examples here. This is um, from when we were in Utah. Nice job. My yeah. office, but hey. <laughs> That's a good one. You should put a panorama of your office in your office. I am in my office. Exactly. Very, I love that. Very meta. Oh, that's gorgeous, though. So look at the difference in these two shots. That's incredible. Absolutely. So this is Arches National Park in Utah. I love that area. It's so beautiful. Um, and so on the left, we have a panorama versus the right is just a vertical shot of that exact same area right there in the middle. Um, they're both beautiful pictures, but you can definitely get a, a much better feel for how expansive this is. 
uh, in that left photo. So we use Panorama to, to create that visual interest. Um, it's harder to translate that to, uh, like I said, like printing out pictures, but there are specialty printers that will print panoramic photos and it goes really well in like Shutterfly albums or whatever photo album service you use to make your albums um, to, to drop a few of those to like break up your storytelling in the book. Um, this is Colorado Springs does a higher balloon festival every like August, September timeframe. Um, and so the panorama shot on the left was, I was trying to help the viewers see like the expansiveness of the festival and how many balloons were all taken off versus if I just do a vertical shot, I could probably only fit one balloon in there. Um, and then one last example, this is Vancouver, uh, where I was at last summer, like I mentioned earlier. And, um, and I wanted to be able to show the city and the bridge. Um, and I couldn't do that. Even in a landscape portrait, it wouldn't fit everything all in one shot. So again, on the right side, you're seeing a vertical image of, um, of that same area. But the panorama on the left is like a much more expansive shot where you can see the whole bridge and stuff. So it's good. Um, all right. Next creative okay. mode. One other comment from Christopher. He, he's the photographer in the family, as you can see. Okay. Can I, I, when we, and he has Apple and I have Android. So we do have a, a really good mix of, of the different type of, type of cameras. You can always adjust the light filter on panorama uh, photos as well. Absolutely true. Nice. One other question. I don't know if you could uh, answer this one. Is there a way to make a pano look less wavy? I have an idea, but you tell me what you think. Yeah, I think that my my only thing is I try to make sure that my feet are really steady before I do um, before I do that. Mm -hmm. uh, make sure you're on an even surface, not on um, you know like a foot up on a rock or something. That could be hard if you're uh, out in nature, I guess. But try to be yeah. on an even surface and try to be um, try to be really steady. I do put my my left hand under my right. I'm a right-handed person, so when I'm holding the phone, I put my left hand under it and I go like that, trying to study it as much as possible. Um, I agree. If you're willing to invest in equipment, there are, you know, things that you can use to hold your phone to keep it as a more steady shot. But um, I'm a pretty lazy, like, I only want to pack this, nothing else. I don't want to pack any other camera equipment. So, Me too. What was your tip, Mia? Uh, same what you just said. I think it's it's more has to do with this, this staying steady on that. Someone had asked if you can do a complete circle on, uh, can you use a panorama to do a complete circle? I feel like I've been able to do that. Yeah, you can. It's not going to show up as like a circle in the photo. It'll be, you know, one like a, big a, extended. Long. Right. Yes. My other pro tip. <laughs> yeah. My other pro tip that's kind of fun. Have you ever seen when people do the somebody jumping out and jumping? Yes, I've done it before. It's so cute. Again. Yeah. Um, so what Mia's referencing is you could start like somebody can be at the, um, at the beginning of the panorama, uh, like your kids or, you know, your friends or whatever. Um, they can be in that beginning shot. And then as you're scrolling across, they come around and they jump into the end shot. And so they'll, they'll end up on both sides of that photo, um, which is it's like, really like, cute. It's, a it's cute goofy, type. but I love yeah. that. Joel has a, a comment too. The wider you go, the more distor distorted the image gets. More than 120 degrees starts to look weird. Very true. So you do sort of have to pick those fun start and end spots to really make the most out of that shot. Yeah. That's what she said. So HDR is high dynamic range. This is um, where we're bringing out more contrast in the photo. Um, so our shadows and our height lights. Um, smartphones typically have an automatic setting for this. Uh, so they're already combining like the, when you take a picture, it's already taking like several shots behind the scenes. And then it's combining those to create that HDR balance. So if you look at um, the far left, which is darker and then the middle, um, which is light. If we were to control this range ourselves, then potentially the photo could be overexposed or underexposed. And then you're losing uh, some of the depth of the shadows into um, what is going to translate into the image as just being black instead of the variation that it really should be. And then same thing with the highlights is that it'll translate into the photo as being just white instead of the variation that it should be. So when we're using um, HDR, that allows it to give us that nice balance. So you can see on the far right image, you get 
um, you get like a, a balanced photo. Now, smartphones are trying to do this automatically for you. There are auto HDR settings. So if you want to turn this off and play with it yourself because you want your images to be darker or lighter, um, more contrast or less contrast, then you need to go to your settings, go to camera, and then you need to turn off the auto HDR mode. That gives you a little more creative freedom to be able to kind of play with it. Um, it is my recommendation that you that you leave it that you leave it on. It's probably already on for you, Karen, um, because it is an automatic thing unless you uh, unless you're just trying to play with it. Um, you're going to get really nice balanced images just off of the auto HDR setting. But if you're trying to create more artistic things or you want it to be overexposed or underexposed, uh, that's when you can go play with those HDR settings manually. Let me pop this question from Chris, another one. He is all about the photos. Today. What do you think about 3D photos? I think they're fun for... Um, for social sometimes I like to see mm -hmm. them out. But, um, but overall, I think, I don't know, I guess I'm old school. <laughs> like I'm good with yeah. the 2D. Yeah, they can, they can feel uh, gimmicky, but they are sort of fun. Um, I think with pets for some reason, like 3D photos seem to crack me up with those two because of the little action shot. So good question though. Yeah, they're really cute. Um, all right. So other creative Ooh. mode, long exposure. I really love this one. I think smartphones have kind of made this pretty easy um, with this uh, live photo thing. This is one more that I'm going to go back into um, more of an iPhone specific. Um, so I'm sure that Android has this option though. But on iPhone, if you turn live photo on, so in, in your camera setting in the top right is those those little circles. Um, if it has a slash through it, that means your live mode is off. You need to turn it on if you want to be able to use this hack for long exposure. So you would turn it on um, and it would have that little yellow rectangle in the middle that says live. That's how you know that it's on. And then you would take an image, you take a picture. And then after you take that picture, you would go to your photos. Um, and in the top left of whichever image you just took, is going to have that little uh, symbol with the circles and it says live. Um, that's a pull down menu. So if you click on that pull down menu, it's going to give you some options of things that you can play with. The only one we're talking about here right now is long exposure. Um, but you can click on long exposure and it allows you to get the effect of a long exposure photograph without you actually having to sit there for um, minutes or however long to create this long exposure photograph. So what are we talking about? What's that look like? What's that translate to in terms of pictures? Um, that's how you get these fun like blur photos. Like if somebody on the left is taking a picture of a highway with a long exposure, um, it's allowing you to see like all those cars uh, flying by and that actually just turns into streams of light. Um, on the right side, this is a, this is a photo from Disney, one of their rides uh, while it's in motion. So the left is without long exposure and the right is with long exposure. Um, it's sometimes people like this because it creates like a little bit more of a artistic effect. I think I had another, yeah, another example back here with um, in the city. Oh yeah. Somebody said the longest picture is cool for waterfall pics. I didn't put one in here, but it absolutely does. It makes it like a really nice flowy looking mm -hmm. waterfall. Um, and so, yeah, it's a really, it's a cool technique. And this is just like a nice, easy way to do it if you're already using live mode. So that's that. And then um, this tip, when I say zoom with your feet, that means I don't want you to zoom in on your camera. Um, there's two reasons for this. It can start getting really like pixelated and grainy. Um, smartphones aren't necessarily the best in terms of uh, optical zoom. Some of them have really good optical zoom, but once they get past that, they're going to use digital zoom, which means that it's just you're going to lose quality of your photograph the more that you zoom in. Um, so it's better for you just to go ahead and get closer to your subject. Um, but the other thing is, if you're standing pretty close, like in this photo, if you're close to your kids on the beach or something, and you want like a zoomed in shot of their face, you're standing close enough that your, your smartphone is going to get like a really nice quality photograph anyway. And when you crop that image, you're not going to lose any quality. Like it's still going to be like a nice quality shot of just their faces. Um, but this also gives you the ability to have the photo with the background so that you can, you know, tell that story, you can see those rolling waves. But if you really want to zoom in on their face, then you would just crop instead of zooming, if that makes sense, so that you're not, um, you're not losing 
uh, more creative ability and quality. And quality, I was going to say. I know that's so tempting with a lot of photos. It's just, you, and I've, because I'm so obsessed with the moon <laughs> all the time, every month. It's like, you know, it's like the full moon's a totally new thing for me. But I'm, I've taken now to taking the tortilla on the window and just saying, oh, look, I got a great shot of the moon because it's so hard to, <laughs> it's so hard to catch. Yeah. But um, I've definitely, I've learned that of just not zooming in, but just coming back later and cropping that out. I had a few more comments about um, the long exposure. Somebody had said, Lynn had said, can you play with the long exposure effect from older photos? And someone had mentioned, yes, if live was on. Yes, that's uh, correct. Um, it's yeah. because when you're scrolling back through your image library, if it was a live photo, it's gonna have that menu that I was talking about like this above it in your in your photo library. So up in the top left, it'll say live in those letters with that little symbol and that is the pull down menu. So if you had live mode on, then yes, you can go back and play with it. Um, if not, there are camera apps, like there's apps that you can download from the app store um, that would allow you to put that effect on your photo but it's know. not going to be like a, a genuine long exposure. It's just a kind of a filter. Gotcha. Joel had a great comment too. Long exposure can be great to smooth out choppy water as well, which can distract from the subject. Yeah, it's really, um, I should have put a water one in here because somebody else mentioned waterfalls and it's great right. for that. It looks really beautiful, um, nice and soft. I think uh, Mira went someplace in New Zealand recently and sent me some really pretty waterfalls. And I was thinking that I was like, this would look so good with long exposure. Right. Yep. Brooke, thank you for catching my tortilla on the window comment. That's if you can't get a good boom shot, just put a tortilla on the glass and say, Ooh, look what I got. It's so clear. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. So Love that you. brings us to what we want you to do with all these great photos now on video is be able to share it. And that um, you can do that obviously by making your own uh, photo albums as well as your own home videos to share with your family. But uh, we would also love for you to share your adventures with us, share your travel and your stories with us. We want to see everything that you're doing and everything that you're up to. We are already active on Instagram. It's instagram.com slash Village. Um, so exactly the same name as our Facebook group. And you can find us there. The account looks like this on the right side. Um, we have over there, we have travel tips that we're sharing. We're also sharing destination guides. So like if you're going... Uh, to Japan or you're going to Australia, you should check these things out, do these things. Um, so those can be really useful for planning your trips. We also share some of our favorite tools there. And we'll also share deal alerts, whether that's um, deal alerts on JGU products or other things that are going on in the travel industry that we want you to be aware of. So it's a great source of information. Um, while you're there, if you want to share, tag, um, comment on our stuff, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Like I said, we want to see what you're doing and what your trips are like. So please, when you share your stories or you're sharing uh, your Instagram reels or you're sharing uh, just even photos, pictures from your trip, please be sure to tag us. Um, you can also use the hashtag JGU and we can see it that way. But we would love um, for you to say at JGU Village and then uh, it'll pop up in our notifications and we can see what you're up to. Um, and we can also share that uh, to our community as well. Um, we're also on TikTok. It's tiktok.com slash at just get out of town. If you're already on the TikTok platform, all you have to do is, is uh, search in the search bar for just get out of town. Um, and we're sharing a lot of those tips over there as well. So if you uh, prefer TikTok, uh, please follow us there too. Um, and then for our followers, we are going to be doing monthly giveaways, which we're really excited about. And this is specifically for if you follow us on our social media platforms. Um, this is not a JGU Village promotion. This is specifically for people following us on Instagram or TikTok. So if you're not already there, we would love to have you follow us on those platforms. You can increase your odds of winning our monthly giveaways by liking our content, commenting on our content, tagging us in your content, or sharing our content to your stories. All of those would increase your chances of winning one of our monthly giveaways. So for April, our giveaway for April is a $500 savings card. Um, and we're really excited about that. But going forward in different months, we have some other surprises coming up for you. So this can vary from month to month, but we will be running a monthly giveaway uh, for our followers on social media. 
Love it. And if you want to know what that savings card does, you can go to jgood.com forward slash savings dash card. And as Julie said, too, you can uh, tag us in your reels, tag us in stories. That's a great way for us to share that out as well, too, out to our audience. So it's going to be a lot of different information. We did have somebody that asked if we are on Twitter, but we're going to focus on these two platforms. Yes, I do see us expanding our social media reach in the future, but right now we are focused on Instagram and TikTok, and then obviously right here in the village where we've been taking care of you for a while. TikTok and Instagram are really the best places for travel, I find, as well, too. It just loves yummy, sexy pictures, right? Or just have wonderful everything with travel, so that's why we, we love that. When I say sexy, I mean everything that has to do with fun travel. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a great place um, to be able to share all of those beautiful photos and stuff and, and not get lost in um, in the community as much as we love seeing everything in the village. Um, it's nice to have our, our feed where we have all uh, Instagram is very pictorial. So you can see a lot of pictures of all of these places yep. and highlights of all these destinations. It's really exciting. Um, and it's also a little bit more community oriented where you're tagging and sharing to stories and things like that. So we can see more of what you're up to and we won't like miss it. Um, so yeah. that's really, that's really exciting. Um, but yeah, We're on I, open to it. the fun travel tips and exciting ideas, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. We, um, we have a whole calendar set up coming up in April and May with uh, all kinds of good content that I'm really excited to push out to our audience. And like I said, um, travel tips and destination guides are like right up there at the top. So can't wait to see what you guys think of it. Uh, always open to your feedback. Yes. And feel free to share your Instagram handles here. I would love to follow and check out what you've got going on. So please share those here in the comments. We do, obviously we need another episode because we've got two other questions. One is what, what's the best uh, to take night shots? Do you have any, any tips on that? Long exposure is the best. Um, so okay. smartphones are getting smarter in the, in that realm. Um, they automatically will try to do long exposure for you if they, uh, if the sensors indicate that there's like less light available. Um, but it's definitely like a long exposure. Um, it would be the best way to take a night shot because you're leaving that shutter open longer um, so that you can get more light and get a solid like quality image. Excellent. Oh, everybody's sharing that. That's great. Beverly wants to know she's going on a cruise uh, to Alaska next month. Oh my gosh, that's going to be so exciting. She wants to know any tips from uh, getting good shots from a cruise ship. I'm going to guess you're going to say the same thing. Um, actually, no, I wouldn't say long exposure for that one. I'll see if I can okay. like um, share from my camera. This is maybe like a little bit of an advanced, advanced tip. But oh, good though, uh, I love it. But I but I really like this. I don't know if I can do this from this angle. So if you um, ooh, if you see my camera, if I was to press on the little numbers right here above photo, do you see that? Those uh -huh. right here in the middle. Yes, yes. These numbers are. Okay, so if I press on that 0.5 like I just did, if I hold it down and then this like spinner comes up, this <sighs> allows you to like zoom in the background um, to bring the background forward closer to the subject okay so if i was looking at you mia and i and i press that down like you're in the image right now i press this down and i scroll in it's going to bring alaska closer to you in the background so it's going to make like a really um prettier shot i did this with my kids when we went to new york and we rode the ferry over and you were able to see like the statue of liberty um in the background, but it was like little teeny tiny, like way off in the distance. But if you did that, it brings the Statue of Liberty closer to them. Um, so that would be my tip. If you're taking shots from a cruise ship and you want to bring the background closer to you, that's how I do it. I love that. Joel, I agree. Sometimes your, his phone takes better shots than his expensive SLR camera. So agree. Like I think, but it's just getting used to these. I think another great tip is to, to make sure to go even just check on YouTube of what the phone, the photo settings or the camera settings are for your phone specifically. And then you can match that up with what Julie had to say here today too, because everybody's, everybody's phone can be a little bit different, but I think taking these two things and putting them together would be great. Uh, everyone is also asking because this was so informative. If you can watch this again, well, this will be up in the village for about 48 hours and then after that you need to go and join the vault right 
That's absolutely right. It'll be available there after 48 hours. It goes mm -hmm. into the vaults and you can view it there as much as you want. Um, and I really had to be selective with tips today. There's a lot more to iPhone photography than this. So maybe if there's interest, we could do another one like that in the future. Yeah, let us know if you're interested. So our action items for today are go to jgoot.com forward slash book. Julie mentioned several things about what you can find, what things that you can learn in the book. And then, of course, we just mentioned the vault. Great place to watch all these videos and you can go because I say it every week. I have to watch things at least several times to learn it. I am a repetitive learner. <laughs> That's just me. And Jaygoot Lounge, of course, and that is what how we found Julie in the first place. She became a lounge member and now she's working with the team as well, but she has learned the guaranteed strategies. Now, here's another one. We have the, the guarantee that you will be able to book at least between 10,000 to 25,000 within the first six months. And it sounds like you overdid that <laughs> in the last Yeah, year. We, we overshot that quite a bit. I mean, we're big, um, we're big cruise lovers, we're big Disney lovers. I love to travel on the weekends and stuff anyway. Um, but we went from doing just like one family vacation a year and like a couple weekend trips to I do probably at least two trips a month right now. Um, and it's amazing. And I love it. We uh, were aiming for at least three big trips a year. I'd like to get that up to four. Um, but yeah, we're doing some some big things. Those business class tickets and, and free cruises and stuff when you're doing a family of four it adds up. And uh, so, yeah, we hit we had $53,000 between last February to this February, so in a year. Incredible. And, and as we say in many shows, if you have any kind of objections of, oh, I, I can't travel, I have this and that going on, listen to what Julie said. <laughs> you probably could have had the most objections to saying, my, I can't travel with my family. Well, yeah, military husband work schedule, two kids in public school. Um, and, and we're a military family. I think we're pretty average. Um, but so I, I really didn't think this was going to work super well for us, but I was like, you know what, if I can at least, um, get a return on my investment in terms of our family trip for the year, then I would feel like it's worthwhile. And it's been so much more than that. I'm so ecstatic with what my life looks like now. It's great. I'm not sure who this is. I love it. Just became a member yesterday. Very excited to learn more and read the tips. We are excited that you're here as well too. And this is our, uh, somebody asked what our Instagram was. Again, it's Jaygoot J Village. And then TikTok is at Just Get Out of Town. One other question. And apparently, yes, having this show on again today. Yes, more videos like this. Great show. This was great. More, more, more. <laughs> Thanks. Would love a part two. <laughs> That's awesome. Somebody did want to know, uh, do you use any tripods or stands? I am a super lazy photographer. I really only want to use this, like carry this around. Um, I use a tripod in my house for social media work. Uh, that's it. I don't travel with that while I'm on the go. I absolutely don't. Oh, but something I do use, I use this thing on the back of my phone. Mm -hmm. It's really gross. I don't want to like show you that. It's a, no, no. It's a quick <laughs> shot, okay? <laughs> but it's yeah. like, um, but it's sticky. Yeah. And, and so mine is, uh, it's called a flip stick. Um, I'm not promoting them. I'm not an affiliate, nothing, but just in case you were curious, it's called lipstick. But when I pop that open, I can stick this on any surface. Um, so I can stick it up somewhere and now it is kind of like a, a living tripod. Like I can stick it on a wall and yeah. have a timer and then I can take pictures of my family that way. Um, also I use this on planes. Like I stick it to the back of the seat in front of me so I can watch movies. Um, and it's Ooh. just like a really nice multi-purpose on the go tool which i love so i'm not an affiliate for this one either but this one's called love handle and i do like it because i can set it up and i can set it on the side and then it actually has a magnet in here yes too which i love and then it has my safety handle <laughs> for all my my wacky shots uh thank you joel for that if you want to travel more there's always a way if you don't there's always an excuse Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure who this is, but thank you for your service, Julie. I agree for your whole family. I pre we appreciate you so much. And yes, uh, way to find a way, Julie. Love having you in the Jay Coot family. So we thank appreciate you. you. Absolutely. All right. So, oh, there's one. Uh, if you're military, there are a lot of military resources like uh, Halakoa and Honolulu and special vacation housing in the Volcano Park. Great pro tip on that as well, right? Yeah. And uh, one other question, I promise, and then we'll stop because it's so good. Do you ever use black and white phone settings? 
Um, I don't. I shoot in color and then I will put it into black and white if I want it. Uh, if I want it in black and white, this goes back to kind of what I was talking about earlier with like zooming with your feet. I want as much creative freedom as possible with the photographs that I take. So I want to start with um, with color. That way, if I want to go to black and white, that's easy. But if I start in black and white, I can't go back to color. So. Love it. Now, that's really a great uh, pro tip as well, too, because you can change it up just as you need. So, all right, we are going to get out of here. Of course, we're going to do a giveaway, though. It's not a $500 savings card. It is a $100 travel savings card. So we have 106 comments. So I'm going to let Julie pick between 1 and 106, and that will be the winner for today. Uh, 82. Okay. Psh. Winner 82, <laughs> commenter number 82, Brooke will get in touch with you and let you know that you won the travel savings card. These are great comments over here. Julie, there's a tremendous tips though, and I'm going to have to go back and watch it. As you can see, I was kind of playing around on my phone while you were talking. <laughs> I have to actually do that while I'm working. So, all right. Thanks everyone. Make sure to follow us over here on the socials, as we mentioned. And as Joel always says, happy travels. We'll see you next week. Thanks. <laughs>